Hey everyone, today I want to share with you my favorite synthetic brushes. Now this is the second time that I'm filming this because the first time was too long and too boring. So I want to <laughs> go through it faster. Um, the majority of my brushes are by a brand called Escoda. They really have lovely brushes, great synthetic options, the price is right, and they have really, really nice um, artist sets or artist curated sets. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. And so I have found that I'm really drawn to just try out different brushes because they offer these lovely sets. I'm going to then start with all of my Escoda brushes and talk about the different kind of series and bristles that they have so you can decide what works for you. Their first line, which is also actually the first one that I've tried, is their Perla line. They have these, you can see, white when new, uh, but they get stained with uh, use. Synthetic bristles, these are the stiffest of all the ones I'm going to talk about. They're pretty stiff, they have a really nice snap to them. These were kind of my first work horses. So this one is the number 14, and then these three come in a set, the Joseph Z set. One of them, I think he has two sets. And um, so you get one that is a travel brush. I think that set is great. These brushes hold uh, a good amount of water and they give you quite a contr uh, controlled stroke and you can also get a nice detail with them. They're great brushes. I've used mine a lot and they really held their shape. So I can tell you that they have a lot of miles on them. And yeah, if you want kind of that stiffer, they're not, eh, yeah, they're pretty stiff. If you want that kind of bristles, then check out the Perla uh, brushes. I used these a lot when I started um, watercoloring and I was doing more of those kind of more simple uh, flowers that you only do in like a few brush strokes. Um, these work really well for them and I've seen instructors use kind of these or very similar brushes. So that's how I found them. Uh, a very similar one um, also kind of stiff hairs is the Prado. Uh, this one is a part of a different set, the Alvaro Castanet set that includes these two brushes. Um, this is my current favorite brush set. And uh, this one also has uh, very similar stiff bristles to this one. This is a number round, a number eight round. And I sometimes use it also for uh, detailed work. It doesn't hold a lot of water. You can, um, what I want from my detail brush is to get a very fine tip and not to hold a lot of water because then you start to get puddles. And usually when I add detail, I want a fine tip or more saturated color. So more intense pigmentation. And this is the Prado one. So they're lovely. Uh, I only have the one, but it's another option. I don't know if it, it looks, I feel, a bit more elegant than the very, very used and loved Perla ones. Next series from Escoda that I have is the Versatile. Now these are softer. Uh, they come in a variety of shapes. You just have to choose, like, to look. I'm not sure which series comes in which shape, but I know the Versatile also have uh, these flat brushes, flat straight uh, brushes. This is the three uh, quarters inch one. I don't use this a lot because I don't use a lot of flat brushes, but they do offer this. Um, this I used to use a lot. I got this at the recommendation of Angela Fair. This is a rigor number 10. You can see the bristles are longer than the uh, regular round ones. And that gives you more uh, you just have more options. It holds more water. It can give you a larger cover, a larger area faster. It also comes to a fine point. 
my issue with the rigor brushes the reason that i don't use them as kind of my go-to brush is that i really enjoy splattering and they splatter in a very messy way like the splatters are fine what reaches the paper is fine but it also reaches everywhere else and i hate switching <laughs> to another brush just for splatters so this is kind of why i don't use this one as much as i used to but it's a beautiful brush i used it a lot it really looks great you know you have to take care of your brushes but as long as you don't like leave them in the jar of water and uh, let them dry properly you'll be fine so uh, these are softer they still have a little bit of a snap this is a regular round number four another good detail brush now my current favorite is the even softer ultimo brush so i'll show you the ones that i have i have two that come from the misled set so this is a number eight rigger i'll show it to you next to the number 10 versatile one so you can see it's quite a bit smaller um, the handle is also smaller and the um, ferrule is just a tad narrower um, it's a beautiful brush the hair of the ultimo range is softer than the versatile and i do prefer that lovely lovely brush if you like rigor and you like soft hair then definitely consider this again this kind of goes messy when i splatter with it just because the bristles are so long and that's why i don't use it as much but i still use these and i love them this one also came in the set with this and it's a flat brush but it has a domed shape and it's lovely again really really soft i don't know i have to play around with this more i never really kind of fell in love with the shape i'm more of a round brush kind of gal uh, but it's a beautiful brush if you like the shape i would suggest um, trying it or if you haven't tried a rigor brush and this kind of shape maybe consider this set because you'll get both of them and you can test them out so my current workhorse is this one along with a few others that i'll show you um, as i mentioned these three are the alvaro castanet set and these are kind of a mop type of brush i love these uh, especially these particular ones the number 14 is fantastic I'm not sure you can buy them individually. Uh, I haven't really used a lot of the 18 because I don't paint big enough for this brush. Maybe I will. But uh, the number 14 is perfect for my workhorse brush. It holds a lot of water. It comes to a very fine tip and I find it very easy to get really thin lines with it. And that's why I really love this brush. It also splatters nicely so this is my probably from all the ones that i've showed you till now is my favorite this is also from the ultimo set another number 14 but i want to show you the difference this is a regular round one and this one is the mop brush so you can see the difference uh, first of all the handle is shorter i don't know if that's the thing with all their uh, artist sets yeah this is also from their set um, I don't mind the shorter handle. I actually think I prefer it. And you can see this is number 14, this is number 14. They're by the same brand, from the same line, but the design means that they are different. The ferrule here is smaller, this one is bigger, this one has more hair, kind of here it has more hair, and then both come to a fine tip. But I really enjoy um, this one, I prefer it. Just the way that it behaves. So these are all my Skoda brushes. Highly, highly recommend them. Now let's move on to my next workhorses. And these are a bit newer in my collection and I use them every single day. I really, really love them. These are the Jackson's Quill Raven. These are synthetic. Jackson also has squirrel brushes that I bought a few years ago before I switched to synthetic brushes. Um, these are really soft, 
yeah, maybe a little bit softer than these, but I really don't, since I bought these, that's what I use. These are nice, but I don't see any advantage. Uh, I only see disadvantage because they are made from real hair and these are not. This is the zero, this is the three slash zero and the 10 slash zero. My only issue with the smaller brushes is that the handle is really thin and I prefer just a bit more uh, thickness. But I love these. Again, they come to a fine tip. This one is a little bit moist because I was painting with it. I can get really, really nice detail with them. And they also hold a lot of water. They look great, very appealing uh, shape, I would say, just the design of the quill brushes. I love these. I highly recommend them. I'm really enjoying them. Yeah, they're great. Uh, a few more that I have that I wanted to recommend to you. Another good option for really soft synthetic hair is the Neptune, the Princeton Neptune brushes. These are super, super soft. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes. My most used one, this one is the Quill, the number eight. Um, it's beautiful. It's probably a bit too big for what I currently tend to use. Um, but it's a beautiful quill brush. The hair is super soft. Probably my most used one is the regular number eight. It's such a good workhorse brush for sketchbooks. It's not too big, it's not too small. It holds enough water, not too little, not a huge puddle. Just easy to control, easy to work with. Um, Probably, I would say, a good brush for a beginner. The number eight is a good size for a sketchbook, like a regular size A5 type of sketchbook. Um, you could probably go a bit bigger, maybe the number 10, but it's just a really nice brush. The number four for details, I don't use it as much because for a detailed brush, I want it to have a fine tip. And for that, I really prefer one of the other ones that I showed you, like the Escoda Prado. Um, Princeton Neptune also has these kind of dagger brushes. These are lovely. You can get very painterly, kind of loose brush strokes with them, and they are fun to play with. However, um, they're not my favorite dagger brush at the moment, uh, but they are really, really nice. So it's a good option. Um, I'll show you my favorite current dagger brush and this was, I found this thanks to a uh, viewer recommendation. So thank you to the person who uh, recommended these to me. I use the small one. This is small, this is medium. When I first got them, I was a little bit disappointed because they have these like kind of, I don't want to say cheap looking synthetic hair, but you know, it kind of reminds me of these brushes that you buy, like these ginormous sets from Amazon for like all the sizes, 20 brushes for like a few dollars. But once I started using it, I really, really fell in love with it. You can get, again, those really loose, fun strokes. It holds a lot of water, but the reason why I love this above the other dagger brushes that I have is that it comes to a very, very, very fine tip, like a few hairs and it's just lovely to paint with it. So I, I love this one. The medium one is a bit too big for me. It kind of gets a little bit messy, but the small one is perfect and I really, really enjoy it. Uh, a few other synthetic brushes that I have that I just, I'll talk about them shortly because I don't use them a lot, but I just want to show you. Uh, this is the Da Vinci Casaneo line. These are very, very convincing animal hair imitation. These are, of course, synthetic. Um, this is their, what do they call this? Like a dagger brush. And the number 10. Um, I thought I would use this more than I actually do. It's it's kind of the in-between. It doesn't have that super sharp edge that I have with this one, with this one, but then it doesn't hold enough water 
to be my kind of workhorse brush so I don't know maybe the number 14 they have a number 14 maybe that one would work better for me but this one it's a nice brush I just don't use it a lot and then this one I thought would be fun to try this is a number eight I guess this is like also a sword brush they would call it I'm not sure I'll show it to you compared to the versatile rigor brush so you can see how long it is it's just it's just too much it's too long yes it comes to a really fine tip but because they are so long you don't get as much control over it so I don't know I should play with it a bit more but I never really fell in love with it a couple two um, a couple more dagger brushes or sword brushes that I tried before I found the one that had everything I wanted are the Da Vinci Cosmo Top Spin. This is number 10. And then this one is a quarter silver, silver line from Jackson. They are what they are. Again, they are kind of in between and don't really work for me personally. I don't use them a lot for the reasons that I mentioned. This is a flat brush from Princeton Elite. And this is their fan brush. So they do offer a lot of shapes. These are really nice, high quality brushes. The fan brush is nice for like grass effects, but it's also really fun to just paint with as kind of your main brush. I think because of the surface area that you have, you have a large surface area when you kind of dip it in your paint, it really reconstitutes the paint fast and you get a very juicy, nice consistency of a wash. And yeah, this is also really, really nice brush. Uh, the bristles are, yeah, they remind me of the Prado one from Escoda. Kind of has a snap to it, still soft. This brush is really nice for large washes or if you want to wet a paper, if you like to paint wet in wet, then this is a good option for that. Last but not least, this one from Jackson. This is a synthetic badger. It's a stippler, sky stippler brush. You know, check Google if you're interested. It's again, kind of a special effects kind of brush. Uh, well, obviously you can use it however you want, but um, yeah, it's also synth synthetic. It's really, really nice. And um, I don't use these kind of brushes a lot. I really prefer to keep things simple and currently, my most favorite brushes are the Raven ones, my Alvaro one, number 14, this one, the Pro Alt, and for really smaller details, I either use the smallest Raven brush or something that has a very fine tip like the Prado one. So I hope this was useful to you. I need a drink now, <laughs> just because my throat <laughs> is done. Uh, have a great day. Thanks for watching, bye.